Hey, how are you doing? Very well, very well, thank you. Now, we've asked each of our speakers today to submit five images, and these images will represent their work, their personalities, their inspirations. So, Dominic, tell us a little bit about the first thing you brought in for us. Uh, this was a commission for Create 2012, and they commissioned five designers to create a, a souvenir of East London. So I thought about, well, in East London, it, it doesn't really have the typical grand buildings that you might get little souvenirs of the central London and West London. But we do have a huge amount of creative makers in the thousands, making everything from, you know, not only objects, but food and songs and performances. And so what I decided to do was to celebrate that fact. And so I visited 21 historical, skillful, creative makers and simply recorded the sound of them making, of them working. And then I put it onto a, a vinyl record, which was also made in Hackney. And yeah, that's, that's, that's how it started. This actually started on Twitter. I'm on Twitter, at Dominic Wilcox. And um, I tweeted, I want to race against a 3D printer to make the same thing. So a sort of man versus machine match. And then there was a curator, Beatrice Galilee. She saw this tweet and said, OK, let's do it. Why don't you do this in Milan? I've got this thing. So I went over to this um, uh, La Rinascente, which is a big department store. And in the center, there was this um, competition between me against the 3D printer to make a model of the Duomo, which is a big uh, cathedral in Milan. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, had, I got dressed up a bit like Rocky, and there was Rocky music. Uh, you don't get much performance in the design world. You get it in the art world, but not, not so much performances in, in design. And uh, yeah, so, so that was quite enjoyable. Then I came back and did it at the V&A again, but that was St. Paul's Cathedral made out of marzipan. And who won? Well, they put, they put it to the public vote. And, uh, and obviously, the public are on the side of mankind. And I was the representative of mankind. So I won again. So was that, was that you won in terms that you were the first to finish, or you won in terms you made the best no, likeness? No, no. In the v &A we had 45 minutes, but people keep wanting to do interviews with me. So it was rather unfair, I found. Um, however, yes, uh, no, it was 45 minutes, and whatever you could make was judged. The printer here, was, I think that's about a thousand pound, or it's between five hundred and a thousand pound. You can get a three D printer for you, connected to your computer. But the quality's not brilliant. It's okay. It's not bad. But I think when that you know, if the quality goes up and the price comes down to a, um, like an inkjet printer, then a lot of people don't get them. But then there's the question of, do we really want people at home printing off a load of rubbish? <laughs> I mean. You know, so the, so so yes, I suppose this this challenge was a bit of a comp, you know, it was a symbolism of of the the human hand against the the computer. And people talk about it as rapid prototyping, and I think you proved mm. that it's not actually. Well, that, that was rapid. my point. It, the ironic thing of rapid prototyping is how slow it is. <laughs> okay, you're known for your drawings. Tell yeah. us about the craft of drawing and also the statements you make with these drawings. Well, I mean. But I'm not the world's most brilliant draftsman, but um, I'll have a go. And I, and I think, you know, what's great about sketching, as opposed to being on your laptop, your computer and whatever, is that it's the, it's the nearest thing to your, to your imagination to communicate. If I want to communicate it's an idea to you, the drawing with the pen, the, you still can't beat that pen. So I've got, so in my sketchbooks, I've got lots of sort of inventions or just ideas of, you know, things that, why hasn't this been done before? Well, there's reasons why the things haven't been done before. But, you know, something like the family poncho with the multiple heads or, or this one at the top here. Because, you know, when you go up, your, up hills, I don't like bending my ankle so much. You know, so I've in, uh, invented these little heels that allow you to keep your foot straight. And uh, this one in the middle, this is reverse bungee jump so you just stand at the bottom and the land actually comes down and bounces it's just a, an alternative way of thinking so um you know I, I i think we shouldn't be so scared of putting out ridiculous thoughts i think we, we're all very uh tight 
and worried about what other people think. Oh, oh God, I can't say that, I can't do that. But actually from crazy ideas, maybe something else comes out of it, which brings us on to the next. <laughs> so I was commissioned by this uh, project called Global Footprint in Northamptonshire. Northamptonshire is famous for shoemaking and the local council are doing some uh, projects and I, I got commissioned to make a pair of shoes and I could do whatever I wanted. And I, I thought about, you know, integrating technology into shoes. You know, that's maybe one area that we haven't investigated so much. And then I thought about The Wizard of Oz and, um, and Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. And she has little, little red shoes. When she clicks her heels together, she gets transported back to Kansas. And I thought, you know, is it, is it possible to uh, make that real in some way? So I, I've done it. I've, basically, these shoes have got a GPS in the heel of the shoe. So the first thing you do is you go on your laptop and we've got a little piece of software with a map and you plot on that map where your destination is, uh, where you want to go. And then you connect via USB cable into the, into the left shoe. And then you press um, upload to, to the shoe. And um, so that sends the destination to the shoe. You unplug that, go outside, and then there's a little switch in the heels. And when you click your heels together three times, the GPS starts up. Now, at the front of the, on the, the this right, right shoe here, that's got a row, a row of lights, and that, that gives an indication of progress. So it grows, it gets to the bottom. When you're at the green light, you've arrived. So it starts with a red. And then the, other, the left shoe, that's got a little circle of LEDs, and that um, points in the direction that you should walk. So um, yesterday, it was, it, it, it's, it's in every publication, and it, you know, it's one of those ideas that has just took the imagination. It's definitely struck a nerve with people. I don't know anyone who gets on, have I got news for you, and Good Morning America, with the sort of regularity that you do. So you're obviously doing something, something right. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you.